Hey guys, today I am going to talk about interesting email I got. So I'm still receiving emails as people get more and more desperate to sell their magic collections. They knew that I paid a very high price. In fact, the price I paid was I would match any buy list, which in hindsight was very foolish because I would often take in cards, modern. I remember I have nine, nine gold span dragons because it spiked in price and then uh, people wanted to sell it. So it turns out that the uh, bad part about buy list is people sell cards that have gone up in price. That they expect and everyone knows will go down. I also bought a lot of booster boxes this way using buy list prices and they were very high. They were incredibly high at the time. Uh, Dave and Adams, their buy list for many of these boxes were very close to TCG player lows. Um, so that's all to say that I overpaid. It's clear to me I vastly overestimated the popularity and uh, long-term investment potential of these booster boxes and even these reserve list cards. That's my fault. There's no one to blame but myself. Hey, it is what it is, right? Now on, on the flip side and something that I really want to kind of emphasize heavily is when you do have a collection and you're not used to selling, you're only used to buying, selling is gonna feel very unnatural to you. It's gonna feel like is you're not going to get the highest price. Whenever you listen to an alpha investment type, he's always quoting the retail price. And whenever he's, he's showing TCG player, he's showing the median, he's not showing the lows. So you might think that your collection is a lot more valuable. So even though you believe that you're gonna take a haircut, you don't realize why the haircut is so big, right? You don't have a TCG player, you don't have an eBay, you're buy listing it. So we, I mean, a lot of these people, I don't know why they're so angry towards me. I'm not the one who sold them the boxes. I assume Rudy does not respond to their emails no more. And they're, not, they're no longer patrons. Uh, the email always start. I used to be a Rudy on pay, Rudy Patreon. I used to be an Alpha Investment Patreon. Half the email start this way, and then they go listing the things they have, and and so on and so forth. Right, mostly booster boxes that I already have too much of, and it reminds me of an episode of another YouTube channel I watched, and it was like, why would I need more retail parallels? I already have like a whole closet of them. And that's what I feel too. It's like, why do I need the hundredth box of War of the Spark? I already have 99 boxes, like, and they're just in storage and there's nowhere to put them. So um, the main takeaway I have for this is a lot of people are desperate to sell. It might be, you know, if I hadn't spent my money at, so unwisely, if I just saved my money until now, it might actually be a really good opportunity to, to buy some boxes to crack really cheap. Uh, people are desperately fire selling right now for whatever reason. I think the economy is still bad. Rate hikes are still happening. Mortgage is very expensive. I mean, everything is out of control, expensive right now. God forbid you have rent. Uh, your landlord is most likely going to increase the rent soon. Just giving you an FYI. Things are, you know, taxes are going to get out of control very soon because we got somebody got to pay for the stimulus from yesteryears. People are also, it's not even just the economy. I mean, also people are losing faith as magic as an investment potential. So when you are just a player, there's no reason you need multiple, you don't need like several cases of a card of a set to enjoy it, right? You just need a few booster packs, maybe some product, open some product. You don't need a pyramid of a million dollars of cards in your basement to enjoy the product. In fact, I would say, if you did have a million dollars of product, you don't even enjoy it. You just open other people's products for Patreon. The sad truth of this is your collection is not worth nearly what you think it is. And when you go to sell it, even though many people said that they, oh, I was expecting this and that, it's just not. And then they get angry. I don't want to deal. The reason, one of the reasons I don't buy collections anymore isn't because they're not good deals or I don't have the money to buy it. I do, and the deals are very good. Simply, Simply put, there's no reason for me to continue on because I don't want to negotiate with somebody who thinks the, the, the hardest thing and the most wasteful thing and time-wise is negotiating with somebody who has a price set too high. They want way too much money for their garbage and they don't understand that it is garbage and they just don't get it. 
And no matter how much you explain to them, you know, why you can't take it for that, why you, they just don't get it. They feel like because the money they put in, and many people, they, they won't sell for less than they put money. They won't take a loss. Yet they're desperately trying to sell when the market price, the reasonable price is less than what they paid for. It's really hard to get these people who truly believed. And I, I, from the emails I have, I, I think they honestly believe there was an investment opportunity. It's hard to get these people to take a 40%, 30% loss when they have, you know, put all this money in and, and you don't want to be the one who you don't want to be the one who explains it to them. Like it's a very bad, they get angry at you, right? You get angry at you. And even when you say, so I, I just say to say, Hey man, you know, uh, we bought too much. Um, not going to buy anymore. Good luck. And even then they still are responding very angrily and I get it. You know, it's very frustrating. I understand I'm in the same position as these people. Uh, when you were told something and it wasn't true and now you relied on that information later, down the road years later and that person is no longer going to help you with it. Heavy bags or my, my God, like it's, it's, it just suffocates you and you don't want to deal like in business. This is true. You don't want to appear desperate because people do not deal with desperate people. And you also don't want to deal with desperate people. Desperate people are going to do dumb things that are illogical that you cannot predict. And that is very bad for business. So a lot of people are finding out that their collections are not worth anywhere near what they thought it would be worth. Um, and it's a very frightening experience when you're the one on the other across the table or across the internet, if you will. And you're the one who has to explain this to them. It's, it's very scary. I'm not going to lie to you. People get very, very angry when they made an investment and they lost it. And maybe rightfully so, maybe they're angry for a right reason, but nonetheless, they're still very, very passionate. And uh, they were told by multiple people that these cards could only go up. Uh, there was nowhere to go up, but up and they were showed graphs and diagram. None of these being realistic, by the way. Uh, because if you sell an Amazon TCG player, you're, you're taking fees, you're taking hits. You sell on whatnot, you sell, sell on eBay, you're taking hits, you're taking fees cut, right? I mean, none of this is sensical in terms of like an investment. It's just so illiquid and hard to liquidate. And when you want to liquidate, everyone else is liquidating. And who wants to buy it? Who wants to buy a War of Spark box? Now, I ask you this question, not as like a, a, a joke or anything. I ask you, who wants to buy a Ward Spark box for 150, 140, 130, 120 even? Like who would want to buy that box except if you wanted to hold it? None of the cards are really that strong or playable, right? I mean, it's, you know, what are you even hoping to pull from that box, right? Where you can buy a newer box or stronger cards, more meta relevant today. Anyway, bye guys.